Next, I want to talk about uh, the visualization methods and techniques used in geo visualization. Uh, you can say mm, we have 2D cartographic visualizations, 3D versions of uh, cartographic visualizations, uh, various data mining tools, animation, spatial temporal visualization, uh, interactive user interfaces, and also combining viral and computational exploration. Some of these techniques and methods uh, will be introduced in the rest of the semester, uh, but here in this first part of the class, I will just go through them very quickly and provide some examples of them so you will have an impression So 2D cartographic uh, visualizations, they are the most traditional um, methods for geo visualization um, and uh, space. When we're using 2D cartographic visualizations, space is typically used to depict space, but not, that is not necessarily the truth all the time. Sometimes we can use space to represent other Mm, attributes or the variable you are interested in. Uh, actually, I believe you have learned how to do this using, I mean, using space to represent something not spatial. For example, this is using space to represent space. So this is a world map, right? Um, we have different countries and uh, by looking at them, you know that um, the sizes, of, the sizes of different countries are generally correct, proportional to each other, and pro also proportional to um, all those countries' real world size, sizes. And um, shapes of them are correct, right? Uh, they are, this map is trying to give you uh, the right shape of each country in this world. And also because this is a choroplast map, I can tell you that the color here uh, represent the uh, population information of each country. So here, I mean, space is space, right? The, the, the space of this map has been used to, to accurately portray the space in the real world. But how about this? How about this? Now we have, we have the same, um, I mean, world, planet Earth, it's, it's still that map. But we can see that uh, shapes and sizes of countries have been distorted. Okay, so they were distor uh, dis dis distorted by, by what? By population, right? Now here we can see that um, mm, India and China uh, they have the largest, they are the largest countries in this map because they have the largest populations around the world, right? So this, uh, for this map, the space of this map has not been used to represent real world space, right? Obviously it, it has been used to, 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 uh, to represent other variable here specifically population, population, right? So it's called value by area category. That's the reason why I, I, I said that you may have learned this because I think this, this is a part of cartography class, right? And um, how to do that, how to produce cartogram um, maps. Um, here I have provided an example here, right? So it's a website. Uh, if you go there and provide um, your your geographic data, uh, it can help you. It actually will help you, will produce cartogram for you. And 3D cartographic visualization, although we are saying that these visualizations, they are three dimensional, but usually, usually um, the, the, the most widely spread use of 3D widespread use of 3D is at the level of very representation while the display is uh, on a 2D screen, right? So uh, unless you are using a VR device, like uh, the, the, the VR goggles uh, introduced 
I mentioned before. Unless that's the case, usually when we're talking about 3D, um, it's a 3D environment on your computer screen. No matter it's a 3D video game, that's a more general type of uh, visualization or a, a 3D geo-visualization like the example I provided here, right? So now uh, this 3D uh, geo-visualization is a combination of a base map, base map of London, part of London in 1881. And uh, uh, beyond that, we have a lot of bars painted with green and red they are erected from from this base map of london right so uh this 3d visualization is trying to show the distribution of males red symbols and females green symbols within this area but i mean if we ignore ignore the specific variable or ignore the uh, specific information this map is trying to 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 provide we say that we have 3d um symbols which are bars right so um i mean the advantage of 3d geo is obvious because it's closer to the real world because the real world is 3d but the disadvantage is also obvious right firstly distance are harder to estimate Different people could just overestimate or underestimate distance when things are portrayed in 3D, especially it's a fake 3D. I mean, if, after all, it's on your 2D screen, right? And also, you, you may have noticed that some of these bars, they are blocked by other bars, which means if you cannot rotate this 3D visualization, a lot of information is what is hidden because some bars are blocking others. If you cannot change the viewpoint, you cannot uh, get all the information that uh, the author of this, this geovalization uh, tried to provide, right? So this is 3D geovalization. And next, uh, we have different video data mining tools. They are also part of geovalization. Vero data mining, also denoted as exploratory data analysis or EDA. In statistics, it's a human-centered cent task that aims at verily analyzing data and gaining new insights, right? So this contrast com computational data mining techniques, which, which use algorithm, algorithms to detect patterns in the data, which means that computational data mining is is computer centered it's automatic you provide the data you have the algorithm and its implementation computer will do this for you but a vero data mining tools they are human centered which means data will be verbalized in front of you on your screen and you need to do the analyze you need to do the analysis instead of using computer to do that right so Vero data mining in general is not tailored specifically for geospatial data, which means um, it can be used by any science. Any science. And uh, generally, there are three types of them. Three, uh, or we say there are three um, techniques generally or widely used in geovalization for data mining. Uh, first one is geometric technique. The second one is called glyph based. The third one is called graph drawing. So I'll show you them one by one. Okay, first one, geometric mining tools, video data mining tools. Uh, we use scatter plots, parallel co coordinate plot, and etc. cetera, and et cetera. And here is an example. Obviously, we have two scatter plots here, right? Um, for each that uh, scatter plot, there are two axes, right? Each one representing a specific variable. And here, it's not even geographic, right? We only have um, um, a lot of dots. Each one is located by two variables, right? In these two scatter plots. And on the right side, we have a 3D version uh, scatter plot, 
right? You can use a uh, MATLAB or other computer software to produce them. And uh, yeah, scatter, um, scatter plot produced by uh, PCs, uh, they are a very convenient, widely used data mining tools. More specifically, Vero data mining tool. And uh, it's not exclusive to geography, to geography. And here is a pretty convenient website for you to produce high quality uh, scatter plots. You just need to go there and provide your data. And uh, there are different types of scatter plots you can choose. And the, the, the website will do the rest. And uh, the second type is called Glyph based Vero data mining tool. So mapping of multiple attribute values to different Vero features of a Glyph. Example, kernel faces. So here on the left side, uh, we have how many? 12 faces. You can consider each face as a Glyph. And on each face, there are multiple viral features. For example, eye spacing, eyebrow slope, eye, uh, um, the shape of the eye, pupil size, and the eye size, I mean, nose size. There are so many features, and each one can be used to, um, to represent a specific variable. So how many variables can be can be represented using one face. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Kernel faces, they are they, they are very famous as glyph-based um, visualization, but I would say it's not a good one because on a single face, there are just too many features, and each one can be used to represent. A specific, to address a specific variable, right? So you have to, how can I say? You have to look at this face, right? And read its mood, because if you change the, 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 the shape and size of eye, eyebrow, eyes and nose and mouth, you can have an impression of, of the mood of that face, right? So. It's just too complex for readers, for users. For example, right? So uh, the, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six variables addressed by one face. For example, for college degree, the color, the skin color of the face is used to represent the college degree, the percentage of the college degree. And uh, uh, the shape of the hair of the face is used to represent different level of family income and et cetera and et cetera, right? Uh, we have mouth, we have eyes, we have nose, and we have ears. Eventually, you could have a map like this, Life in Los Angeles, right? It was produced in 1971, uh, decades ago. And you can say, uh, you can read the mood or the emotion expressed by each face here. If it is angry, it means that the life there is pretty bad. If it is a smiling face, it means that it's a, it's a pretty good um, area in Los Angeles. Because you can say that, uh, I mean, different shapes of, uh, of, of small faces, they are, they are representing, um, different affluences, right? And also the shape of the mouse is used to represent uh, the unemployment rate and urban stresses and also proportional white population. And uh, yeah, I would not say this is a good example because this map is simply too complex, too complex. And here, if you click this example hyperlink, you will just jump to another website using um, kernel faces to address um, different variables. You can go there. I would say it's not a good example uh, uh, either, uh, but I will say, uh, I mean, it's a method. It's a glyph method to do geovisualization, but I would say not, not a lot of people are using it today. 
Next one, um, again, it's not exclusive for geography to geography. It's called radar chart. All right. So now we have we have a circle here and uh, different axes. Axes they are assigned. They were drawn uh, on this on this circle and uh, they are pointing at different directions. And uh, we have within the largest circle, there are small circles and you can use the radii of the circles to quantify, to quantify your variables, right? Um, and uh, each direction, direction is indicating, or I can say is representing a specific variable. On the right side, we have an example showing what percentage of owners use a specific service in a week. Blue areas, they are for smartphone, and orange areas, uh, they are for, for, for what? For tablet, okay? So I would say that radar chart is a pretty good uh, glyph-based um, visualization because, for example, here, you can clearly, conveniently compile uh, people's usage of tablets and smartphones on different services. For example, most people, I mean, more people, 60% of people, they are using smartphone to receive email. And less than 50% of people, they are using tablets to do the same thing, right? You can compare them, you can compare them. It's very direct. And here um, is another website for you to, to create radar chart, okay? And uh, glyphs, they are easily combined with map displays, but sometimes increasing number of symbols and, uh, and attributes has limited utility. Like I said, uh, the, the reason why kernel of space, a uh, kernel of faces, they are not widely used is because that they're just too complex. But when you're using other glyphs, you should be careful with the same problem. For example, here, right? We're using pie charts to, to represent what? Different populations. Red is for Hispanic population. I mean, blue is for other population for each state here. And the size, the size of each pie here is representing the total population of that state, okay? So here, how many uh, var uh, variables are we trying to address here? Three, right? The percentage of Hispanic population, the percentage of other population, and the total population of that state, right? So here we have three variables. I would say that's, that's the best glyph-based Geovalization can do. If you add more variables, for example, four, five, or even six variables into this geovalization, it will be just too complex for your readers. It's not a good idea. If you want to do that, if you want to portray, if you want to address more variables, simply make another map. Okay. And uh, the last type of uh, video data mining tools is graph drawing. So geospatial data often contain links between related elements, right? Links, does it ring a bell? Something you have learned from cartography class is flow, is flow map, right? Flow map. And uh, here, right, is an example of flow map uh, and uh, this is showing the number of containers handled by different continents. Specifically, uh, the size of each circle here is proportional to the number of containers handled by each, uh, not actually continent, let's say different regions around the world, okay? So beyond that, we also have linear features with arrows showing you the, the, the worldwide flows of containers handled and also um, the direction of the flow because we have arrows, 
here, right? So this is a very basic and a typical example of graph drawing geo-realization, or more specifically, data mining, data mining geo-realization. And uh, what are those graphs here? Circle is a graph, right? This flow, these linear features, they are graphs. They are graphs. And uh, here I have another mm, older and simpler version of flow map without, um, without directions of traffic. But you can say if you compare them, they are similar to each other. Okay. Next one, animation. Um, animation is a new technology. Is a new technology compared to statistic. Uh, I mean, not statistic. St compared to static maps, right? Because maybe thirty years ago, twenty or thirty years ago, uh, our PCs were not powerful enough to make animation. But today, it's very convenient to do that. Okay. Dynamic and interactive displays are core concepts of to geo So if you can make an animation and it's necessary, it's pretty good. Okay. So leaving interaction aside, uh, aside, animation maps use time to add another visual dimension to a display. If you know a little bit, uh, um, a little bit knowledge of animation, um, you know that uh, animation is nothing but um, a series of um, frames. Each frame is a static picture. You put them in order. But what's the principle for that order? Most commonly used one is time. You put them in order by time and show them one by one quickly. And uh, our brain will consider that um, you are looking as something moving in front of you instead of a series of uh, static pictures. So that's, that's animation. That's the easiest way to implement animation, right? So here, when you're trying, when you're trying to make animation, there are uh, dynamic variables you should be careful with. Uh, I'm going to introduce them later in the topic of animation, but I will just list here for you to to have a general idea of animation, of animation. And here is an example. It's, it's a GIF animation I made using online tools. It's pretty a basic, a very quick. I just screenshot um, several Google Earth uh, images showing um, the largest city in China, which is Beijing, from 1985 to 2015. So if you look at this animation, you will see that the city expanded a lot in how many years? In 30 years, in 30 years, right? And uh, you can say uh, this change is very direct. It's very obvious when you're trying to use an animation to show it. You can see the dark areas this area, this is the center of Beijing. The dark area expands continuously, which means that the urban area is expanding, is expanding. So it's a, uh, it's a, uh, how can I say? It's not that advanced, but compared to technique, techniques used uh, 20 or 30 years ago, animation is something new. Animation is something new. And uh, what's the purpose of this animation? It is trying to show you that um, this city expanded fast after the economic revolution of China. And you can also use this animation to show that the population also changed a lot during that time period. For example, in 1985, this, is, this was Beijing, 6.2 million residents lived in Beijing. I mean, this is a huge number uh, in US, but it's, it's China, okay? And uh, in 2015, 21.7 million residents live in Beijing, okay? So a huge change, more than three times, more than, uh, uh, I mean, the, the residents increased a lot increased a lot. And simultaneously, if you compare these two images from 1985 and 2015, 
you can see the also see the huge change of the area of urbanized of urbanized regions here in Beijing, right? If you show this only these two pictures to people, uh, yeah, you can do that. But it's better if you can say, I mean, if you can show them what what's what happened. I mean, between these two years, between 1985 and 2015. Of course, this is uh, all I've mentioned here. Uh, they are advantages of animation. There are still, there are also disadvantages, okay? I will just show you and provide more details later this semester. When we are discussing, when we're discussing animation in detail, okay? Okay, um, the next technology here is called spatial temporal visualization. So it's relatively easy to portray space using a map or uh, I mean, use an, or 2D map or 3D map, but I mean, how to add time as another dimension into your visualization, into your geo visualization? That's the that's a, that that's the question. Uh, spatial temporal visualization is trying to answer. Okay, um, it is very common in the earth sciences and related disciplines because when we are when we're studying Earth, time is pretty important, right? Time is pretty important. The goal is to review, analyze, and understand patterns of temporal change of phenomena and uh, applications including global warming, uh, population development, spread of disease, et cetera, and et cetera. So time is something uh, much more difficult to, to visualize than other geographic entities and phenomena because time is not something you can say or something you can grab, right? And uh, classification of spatial temporal data according to the type of temporal changes. Okay, there are ex ex existential changes, appearance, disappearance of features, right? For example, a building was there 20 years ago, but now it's not there anymore, right? Changes of spatial properties, change of location, shape, size, etc., and etc. Change uh, changes of thematic properties, qualitative and quantitative change, quantitative changes of attributes. Okay, okay. Uh, I will just uh, stop here, and uh, in the next part, I will start with providing some examples for spatial temporal visualization. Thank you.